Hello and welcome back to League Talk, the podcast all about coaching, management and all things League of Legends. My name is AJ and in today's episode we're going to be talking about something that has been popping up in a bunch of different podcasts that I've been doing. Um, most notably the most recent one with a guy called Owen Blake who was a PhD student. But it's been there in the podcast with Ismail Pedraza, it's been in there with Mummus, loads and loads of podcasts and something that I've been talking about an awful lot. Um, and what we're going to be talking about is testing. Now this is one of the keys to any form of adherence. Um, and to sort of sum adherence up really quickly, that's it's to do with sticking to something for an extended period of time. So a lot of people describe talk about exercise adherence, which basically means that you go and do the exercise that you were planning, whether that's gym, whether that's cardio, and you do it for more than a week or more than a month. And it's something that you adhere to, you stick to for a long period of time. As I said, it's been in recent podcasts, Owen Blake, Ismail, Mumma. So go and check those out if you are interested in finding out a little bit more about routines, uh, meditation, anything sports psychology. Uh, go and check those ones out. They've been pretty recent. I think within the last month or so we've had those podcasts. Um, but now for me, when, when we talk about testing, one thing that's really, really important is uh, self-awareness. Um, that's the way I describe it, um, but it's pretty much a similar concept to what Owen describes as self-regulation. Now, when I refer to self-awareness, I mean the ability to look at yourself and understand what works, what doesn't work, what you enjoy, what you don't. The, the awareness of oneself and the true needs and wants of your body and the mind, and then going ahead and satisfying those. Um, so that seems really complicated and it's not easy. Of course, it needs a lot of understanding of yourself. It needs uh, a lot of time and the ability to look inwards, but it can be done. Um, so for example, exercise, this is really, really important. The self-awareness thus comes from the body and the mind being better and closer to peak performance with uh, exercise. Satisfying that is important, but testing is where the key information lies. Obviously, this uh, we're going to be focusing on how we apply testing to League of Legends, how we apply testing to performance, and basically just gaining LP, getting wins, and hopefully becoming a better League of Legends player. Now, a lot of people will see testing as some sort of weird, sciencey lab rat poking an animal with a, a stick sort of thing, but it, it is quite simple, and in essence, um, it's all to do with listening and feeling to what your body and mind is telling you, um, as often it can be correct. I know that sounds a little bit obs uh, obscure, a little bit strange, but what we'll do is we'll go through examples where listening to your body is a good idea. Um, and I'll give examples and uh, a point of reference, a frame of reference of what I do um, and have done in the past. This I'm gonna be brutally honest, this isn't something that I, you can always do. This isn't something that um, a routine is cookie cutter and you can do it every day. Obviously people have restraints like uh, full-time jobs. They have restraints like family and friends and things like that. So um, don't, as much as I beat myself up about it, try not to beat yourself up um, because once you're doing a little bit of good, it's better than doing no good, but uh, obviously getting to the peak performances where, where we want to be. Um, so let, let's talk about the first thing to do with testing and that's to do with routines. Now I did a podcast this time last week all to do with uh, routines and schedules and making, creating and finding the right schedule for you. Um, so asking questions like what time do you wake up? How much sleep do you need? Um, do you exercise when you wake up? Do you have breakfast? What do you eat? Um, these questions will you will have to test and find out what, what works best for you. So here's what I've figured out for me. Um, in an ideal world, I'll wake up at 6.30 in the morning. I'll stretch or meditate until about 7 a.m. Um, meditation is something I've been doing more in the last week or so than I have it before. Um, but then from 7 till 7.30, I'll eat. I'll have some breakfast, a cup of coffee. Um, and then up until about 10 a.m., I'll do some work. And then around 10, 30, 11 o'clock, uh, I'll exercise and then continue work after that, um, making sure that I've got things like good airflow, I've got a tidy desk, um, and I'm drinking plenty of water, as well as actually taking time away from our desk, because that's also something that's really, really important. Um, so those sort of questions for the morning routine can be tested quite easily. It's, for example, um, do you eat? Do you do something like intermittent fasting? We'll talk a little bit about that later, but... Is that something that's actually gonna be good for you? For me, um, it worked really well for losing some body weight, but I found that by sort of maybe 12 to 14 hours into the fast, all I could think about was food, uh, and that used to just distract me, so I'd have to eat. Um, do you exercise first thing at 6.30? I, I'm not very good when it comes to exercise, whether that's cardio, body weight, free weight, anything like that. Um, what do you eat is another one. You test that, for example, you could try 
Um, maybe something like porridge, that's got great slow releasing energy, a banana on top of that is amazing, some honey, something along those lines. Um, you might actually find that if you have carbs early in the morning that doesn't work very well for you and you want something light like some fruit or something like that. Um, but it, it really is different for everyone. So testing, trying, finding out what is going to be best for you is key to the routines and how you work your mornings. Um, and the next thing that we want to talk about is to do with exercise. Now, testing exercise can be really difficult, but obviously we've spoken about this before. There's two main types of exercise. There's cardiovascular exercise and there's weighted exercise. Obviously, weighted exercises can be broken down to body weight and free weight. Um, but the important thing here is to map your actions to your goals. So if you want to just work on performance, one thing that's really, really good is cardio and even better with green exercise. We spoke about green exercise in the exercise podcast to do with performance coaching, um, but that has some wonderful effects on your mental state, your ability to stay positive, things like that. And green exercise basically just means you exercise outside. Um, if you want to increase your strengths, then free weights is probably a good option. Um, but you can try all of these different things out. I did do uh, a couple of uh, ideas as to what people could do for exercise, especially in esports. Um, because there's things like your lower back and your core that you have to be a little bit more mindful of, bearing in mind you're sitting down for maybe 12 hours a day, something like that, in front of the PC doing the uh, doing and playing League of Legends. Um, so go back and check that out. I believe it was episode 22. We're now on episode, I think it's 54. So we're, we're getting, we're past the, the half century now. Um, but yeah, so when it comes to exercise, you find out what you like. If you hate cardio with a venom and a passion and you don't find it enjoyable, then body weight and free weight might be the way to go. If you find that actually you, your only focus is on performance, then cardio is probably the best way to go. Um, so testing what you think is good for you, what you enjoy, because the key with exercise is enjoyment. And the more you enjoy it, the more likely you are to adhere. Um, for guys, there's often the stigma of trying to lift heavier and heavier. And if that means that you're exercising more, then great, as long as you have the right form and you're looking after yourself. Um, maybe you know going with uh, a personal trainer might be a good way to do it first or going at least with someone that really knows what they're talking about so that pretty much sums up the exercise portion of it we're going to talk about diet and eating um, that's another thing that can be tested uh, intermittent fasting works for some but not all this was something that we spoke about earlier the effects of it aren't always felt so as I said for me um, the effects of intermittent fasting can be things like you concentrate for longer you're a harder worker um, when you're fasting, you are in in theory, I don't believe it's 100% proven, but your body starts to use the fat as fuel. Um, so it's really good for shredding fat and not weight necessarily, not body weight um, or muscle. Um, but the effects aren't always felt. So maybe you feel great on a vegetarian or vegan diet. Testing things to eat, such as water intake, amount of protein, carbs, fat, fiber, your main macros of protein, carbs, and fi uh, fat. Um, finding out if a high fat diet works for you, if a low fat diet and a high protein diet works for you. Um, it might make you feel better or worse in certain, <laughs> certain circumstances. So of course, sticking to uh, medical advice and do some research on macronutrients. The macros um, are measured in grams and it basically changes dependent on your height, your weight, what you're trying to achieve and your TDEE. Um, which is your total daily energy expenditure. So that's basically the calories that you burn um, naturally. So just by sitting um, and or going about your normal life, your, the calories that you normally burn with that. So trying to find out what diet works for you, what you feel better on, um, what you feel worse on. Is processed food something a massive part in your diet? Is fruit and uh, lots of fiber a massive part in your diet? Because um, obviously everything's great in... Uh, in, in little doses. If you have too much fiber in your diet, you might start to find that um, that your stomach gets worse because of it. You, you might find that your digestive tract doesn't uh, fire as well as it should be doing. Um, but this sort of leads nicely onto the most efficient headspace for doing. Now, this is something that I try and achieve as much as humanly possible, um, but it is different for everyone. You hear people say, oh, I'm a morning person or I'm not a morning person. So obviously the most efficient headspace for doing refers to whether you're basically, you work well in the morning, the afternoon or the evening. If you work really, really well between five and 10 p.m. and that's the best time for you to work, then mapping your day around that is probably the best way to do it. I work best in the morning. Uh, I do all of my best work generally between sort of 7 a.m. and early afternoon is when I do my best work and the most efficient hours are so probably between 7 and about 11.30 I find that's when I get the most done 
Um, so, so finding that out, uh, finding your most efficient time to do and extracting, squeezing out every second of that is super, super key to making your days as good as they can be. Um, for me, I love being awake early, as I said, in the morning, and therefore I get up early. On top of that, I work best in the morning, so I use that as much as I can. Then I use exercise as that sort of mental reset and go back to work after this. Um, but there are like a couple of caveats with this. It's really, really difficult because the human mind and the human body is sort of, in a way, it avoids things. It is inherently lazy. So doing things that are good for both your body and your mind, despite what your mind says, is also quite important. In essence, you don't want to listen too much to what your mind and body are saying. Um, if you end up listening to the laziness that doesn't motivate and doesn't achieve, it's not always the best option. Obviously, this is for those who are trying to map their actions to um, their, their hopes, their thoughts, their feelings. Um, so trying to be as motivated and as goal orientated po as possible, especially in League of Legends, especially in esports, is really, really key. Um, but the difficulty with all of this is, is actually applying this to League and applying this to esports. Um, but the first thing that I would say is testing all the different things that we've mentioned in this podcast, in this video, um, is in essence you're creating a routine. So by testing what time you wake up, testing your exercise, your nutrition, um, what, when you work best, what you eat, all of these different things is basically going to make you better and, and is likely to increase performance really. Um, if you find that exercise is you know, helping your mental, helping you not tilt during games, for example, then wonderful, at least you've tested that and now you know that uh, maybe exercise can be used as a little reset when you're tilted. But to really apply this to League even further, you can test things like champion pool. So for example, I've, I've always been the sort of person that believes that playing in comfort is really important and at least playing similar styles. So for me, uh, I'm playing support at the moment and have been for a while now. Uh, and I know that I'm better with uh, engaging champions. So the champions that I'm playing at the moment can be the likes of Leona, so a little bit of Rakan, he's a little bit different, but Leona, Alistair, Nautilus is super good at the moment. Um, so testing out your champion pool, testing out your strengths is a really good way to do it. Maybe it's best to do that in normals and not in ranked play, um, but you can also test the things like limitations of champions. You know that, uh, for example, Nautilus's limitation in terms of tankiness is quite high because he has the ability to pop his W as well as the base stats, as well as the armor and magic resist that he can build. Um, you talk a lot about, you hear a lot about IG and them really knowing the limits of their champions and really, really pushing that. Obviously, IG are a bit of a, a bit of a special case in terms of uh, League of Legends players and in terms of teams. Um, but that's another really, really key thing that you can test is how far can I really go with this champion? If I use Nautilus's hook on cooldown against a poke matchup, um, a poke lane, is that going to be the right idea or shall I be looking for the 100% hooks and maybe going for the auto attack first to proc the passive? Um, you can test matchups. How does Nautilus work into Tarek, for example? I noticed that Rakan versus Tarek, when you're playing the Rakan, I think it's better to go for the quick trades um, and hopefully you pretty much have to wait for, for jungle um, jungle ganks because of Tarek's healing. Um, but the quick trades is really good because uh, the likelihood of you getting stunned, especially as your Rakan, is quite low. Um, but in essence, testing is just a way to learn. You learn more about yourself, about your play style in League, uh, about the way that you communicate through testing different things. So um, in essence, I think this is a really, really good way to just try different stuff and figure out how you're doing, figure out where you are um, and where you wanna be really. Um, so what we've talked about in this one is uh, the, the key to this is adherence and getting better and improving performance. Um, talking a little bit about self-awareness, self-regulation, um, and making sure that you are aware of your body and regulating the things that your body and mind need. Um, so we then went into talking about exercise. We went to talk about morning routines, uh, nighttime routines, diet. Do you eat in the morning? Do you not eat in the morning? Nutrition that goes with that. Um, the most efficient headspace for doing and uh, not listening to your mind too much because of the inherent laziness that we have. Um, so I hope you have very much enjoyed this episode. This one was a fun one for me to think about. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been really good. I think this is one of the keys for me um, to figuring out things in terms of how my day works um, and how I can fit time, compartmentalize my day. So I hope it's gonna be useful. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you did get in contact, let me know at League Talk Show on Twitter. It's all above me if you're watching the video and at League underscore talk on Instagram. Those are the best places to find me. I am on uh, Facebook. The new website has launched. Um, so that's leaguetalkshow.com. 
Uh, so if you're interested, want to see some written articles about the podcast that I do, uh, check those out. But I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you've enjoyed the episode. We'll see you on the next one.